Founding Red Hot Chili Peppers guitarist Hillel Slovak would die at just 26 in 1988. Prior to his death, Slovak was struggling with addiction while on the cusp of a critical and commercial breakthrough with his band's third album. But over three decades since his passing, Slovak would be regarded in shaping not only the band's early musical direction, but their continued success to this day. This is his story. Halal Slovak was born on April 13, 1962 in Haifa, Israel, and would move to the United States with his family, initially to Queens, New York, and then resettling to Los Angeles, California five years later. Slovak took interest in painting as a child, but focused more on music in his teens when he got his first guitar as a bar mitzvah present. By this point in time, he was attending Fairfax High School, and he would befriend a student named Michael Balzeri, better known as Flea, as well as drummer Jack Irons, both of whom would become his future bandmates. In the meantime, Slovak found his footing as a hard rock and metal bass lead guitarist taking note from Jimi Hendrix, Led Zeppelin, and Kiss. He'd form his first band in the late 70s with his friends from school, with Irons on drums, Alan Johannes on vocals and rhythm guitar, and Todd Strassman on bass. The band started out as Chain Reaction, then renamed themselves Anthem, and later Anthem spelled with a Y. These days fans can get a good idea of what Anthem sounded like thanks to a recent discovery of a few of their demo tapes. In October of this year, Johannes, who would later achieve fame in the 90s as a frontman for the band Eleven, unveiled one of Anthem's early demos through his Instagram page, an 8-track tape from 1979 called Paradox. On his post, he writes, found this cassette deep in a box, can't believe it still kind of plays. Two weeks after that post, it was revealed that another Anthem demo, this time from 1980, called Forever Love, was discovered by Blast Music Management, who had obtained it from Total Annihilation Studio. Between the two tapes, you can get a sense of Slovak's approach as he moves from straight-ahead blues rock of Black Sabbath to the arena rock of the early 70s era Rush. By the early 80s, Anthem would compete in a Battle of the Bands contest, and also manage late-night gigs in the local bar scene, even though all its members were of legal age. After one of those performances, Slovak met another Fairfax High student named Anthony Kiedis who was in the audience, who was a budding actor at the time. Kiedis recalled his experience in his 2004 autobiography, Scar Tissue, recalling, I usually felt like the leader in most of my relationships with kids my age, but I immediately knew that Hillel was at least my equal, and in fact, knew a lot of things that I didn't. He understood a lot about music, was a great visual artist, had a sense of self and calm about him that were just riveting. With Kiedis in the picture, the group became fast friends with a bond over music and casual drug use. Kiedis would even act as Anthem's roadie, as well as their hype man for live gigs. Eventually, the band changed their name to What Is This, switched their sound from hard rock to new wave, and found that original bassist Todd Strassman could no longer keep up. Slovak had been privately giving lessons to Flea for several months, and once Flea became competent enough, he would become Strassman's replacement. What is this continued performing on the LA club circuit, and Flea would temporarily leave to play bass for the punk band Fear. By 1982, Slovak and Irons regrouped with Flea and Kiedis to put together a live act they called Tony Flo and the Miraculously Majestic Masters of Mayhem. While What Is This was still together, as part of the act, which they debut at the Rhythm Lounge, Slovak, Irons, and Flea would improvise a punk and funk inspired instrumental, while Kiedis read a poem out loud that he had written called Out in LA as a rap. The group had intended to only perform once, but since their rapport with the audience was so positive, they decided to continue under the name Red Hot Chili Peppers and even recorded a demo together. The next year, both What Is This and Red Hot Chili Peppers were signed to major record deals, with What Is This going with MCA, while the Chili Peppers had a joint deal with EMI America and Enigma Records. At this point in time, Slovak and Irons were still under the notion that the Chili Peppers were a temporary act, so while they released their self-titled debut in 1984, the two stayed committed to What Is This, and the band released their debut EP Squeezed around the same time. The Chili Peppers hired drummer Cliff Martinez and guitarist Jack Sherman to fill Irons and Slovak's places. What Is This would be interviewed on the show Video Wave by Tim Summer, who played the music video for their single Mine My Have Still I. When Summer noted the rising popularity of the Chili Peppers and asked Slovak whether it was wrong for him to leave the group, he responded cheekily saying, They may have think I made the wrong decision, but no, I didn't, I made the right one. But ultimately Slovak would join the Chili Peppers, and in 1985, while What Is This was recording their self-titled debut album, Slovak grew disenchanted with their direction. Coincidentally, the Chili Peppers were growing frustrated with Slovak's replacement, Jack Sherman. While they admired his playing, they were critical of his attitude, with Kiedis remembering, at one point Jack even put tape down on the stage and told me that his space was off limits. Why would you want to cut yourself off from your bandmates spiritually or physically? As Slovak returned to the band, Red Hot Chili Peppers would release their sophomore album, Freaky Style, in 1985, and it was the same year that What Is This would break up. Jack Irons returned as well to the Chili Peppers, and by this point in time, all four band members were addicted to various 
drugs, and for Slovak, that drug would be heroin. In fact, Slovak was so secret about his addiction, it got to the point that other members failed to show much concern, except Kiedis. Kiedis would express this in Dave Thompson's 1993 biography on the Chili Pepper, stating, I became so familiar with the nature of addiction that I knew Halal was as deep as me. He was just more in denial. Halal thought he had power over his dark side. In his book Scar Tissue, Kiedis would also open up about Slovak's aversion to going to rehab, saying, I took Halal to a meeting once, but he hated to admit that he had a problem. He hated to admit that somebody could help him, and he was generally shy of crowds. By 1987, even with all these difficulties, the Chili Peppers were growing as a band and continued to refine their unique sound blending funk and heavy metal. It seemed like things were looking up after some false starts, as all four members were now actively working in the studio together for the first time. The group would release their third album, The Uplift Mofo Party Plan, and it would be their most critically and commercially successful at this point, and the tour to support the album appeared to go smoothly, but as soon as they'd return home, so would their habits. Kiedis would remember, we landed at the airport, gave one another a hug, and it was great tour, great being with you, call me in a few, I'll be good, you going to be good, yeah I'll be good too. And then both Lel and I made a beeline for our individual dealers, he'd say. By January of 1988, Slovak would write in his diary that he aimed to, and I quote, begin a drug-free phase of his life. Although by June of the same year, he was said to have been struggling and had expressed to his brother James that he wanted to stop using drugs altogether, but it was too late. On June 27, 1988, the guitarist would be found dead in his apartment, and an autopsy would reveal that two days prior, he would die from an overdose. Guitarist John Frusciante, a fan of the band who was heavily influenced by Halal Slovak's guitar playing, would be his most prominent successor and is still in the band to this day. Drummer Jack Irons, who was devastated by Slovak's death, would quit the group and was replaced with Chad Smith. The band's follow-up album, 1989's Mother's Milk, would be dedicated to Slovak, and a lot of the lyrical themes were more introspective, dealing with the death of the guitarist and the impact of drugs on one's life. Slovak's guitar playing could be heard on the ninth track, Fire, a cover of the Jimi Hendrix tune, and the cover booklet of the album would feature a painting by Slovak. In 2012, the Chili Peppers would be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and Slovak would be posthumously included, with his brother James accepting the induction in his place. Seven years later, Flea would visit the guitarist's grave and write how he felt in a post on Twitter saying, My thoughts will always be with my beloved brother, a painter, a musician, an intellectual, a hilarious and wild joker and lover of his friends. He asked me to start playing the bass, changing my life forever, and that's only one of the many ways he influenced my growth. Happy to be sitting by his grave on this sweet and mellow rainy day, he'd write. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe, and we'll see you again on Rock and Roll Your Story Sticker.